So this was originally um, naval housing, and when the Navy decided they didn't need the property anymore, it was sold off. And I'm walking through the parking lot of the Valley View Casino Center with Kathy Kenton, the chairwoman of the volunteer planning group for the Midway District. All of this land actually from beyond the sports arena all the way down um, to beyond where Dixie Line is, is all city land. This giant plot of land is not far from the Old Town train station and it sits practically empty most of the time. That's why the city is proposing to rezone it and transform it into a compact community village. Kenton says those plans included in the Midway Pacific Highway Community Plan update have been in the works for quite a while. The plan update has been in process for 11 years. Um, we're close to the finish line now, so there, there's a lot of opportunity to take big chunks uh, of land and um, do something really special and revitalize the area, eliminate the blight that we're also well known for. That blight includes strip clubs and big industrial yards. The plan update would set the stage for some 10,000 new houses and apartments beyond what exists today. That could make a real dent in San Diego's housing shortage, which is part of what makes this city so darn unaffordable. Of course, more residents could make Midway's abysmal traffic congestion even worse. Kenton says that's why the plan tries to build out safer spaces for pedestrians and cyclists, so not everyone will need a car to get around. One of the primary goals of the plan is to really go deeper into the mobility and, and transit um, opportunities that could exist and find solutions, whether they're local, regional, to bring those to the forefront so that we can really start to fix the problem. So in Midway, actually bringing in residents is going to bring in that sense of neighborhood that you sort of lose after five. And you kind of get a little shadier crowd, you know, in some of the areas maybe, not all, but some. Marcella Escobar Eck is a land use consultant who has pushed for new housing in neighborhoods that are sometimes resistant to it. Here's part of, you know, the coastal map. She suggests Midway's embrace of density could be because more residents means more eyes on the street after hours. Once you start bringing in that different activity at different times of the night, it starts revitalizing a neighborhood. It starts bringing in people that want to go around at night and shop. On the concerns of increased traffic, Escobar X says the neighborhood's growth will be gradual over time. With the housing comes other infrastructure. With the job growth and the employment base comes other infrastructure. I mean, so it's really just putting those things in place at the time, knowing that there are going to be points of discomfort. And that's okay. That's how cities grow. That's what happens. The city council is scheduled to vote on the Midway Community Plan update next week. But that may not be the end of the story. Some advocates and council members have suggested exempting Midway from the 30-foot height limit that applies to all neighborhoods west of Interstate 5, except downtown. Over on the other side of Camino del Rio. Kenton supports that and says the height limit was supposed to protect views of the coast, of which Midway has none. Obviously, if we can go up higher, we can open up the community, we can add more parks, we can add more recreational opportunities for residents and visitors, and um, we can have a, a much more interesting architectural um, element than we will limit it, being limited to 30 feet. Raising the height limit is far from certain, though. It was imposed by a referendum in 1972, so any change to it would be subject to a citywide vote. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.